Shark Week, love it or hate it, this Discovery Channel mainstay doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. I'm sure that lots of you will have started spotting all the little teasers for Shark Week 2025 all over the internet and the television as well. I think if you're interested in sharks, it's almost impossible to miss. Now, I'm making this video a fair way in advance because I decided to go on holiday during the sharkiest time of the year. Well planned, Chris. So because I'm making it ahead of time, there's probably a few more things now that have been released to the public. But as of the time of making this episode, there's one Shark Week special that we're all now privy to, and it's called Dancing with Sharks. This show is made by a production company called Pilgrim Media Group, and about six months ago, they approached me to host the show, and I turned them down. So stick around, and I'll give you the complete rundown on Dancing with Sharks and why I said no. Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. Now, for some of you more longer-term viewers of Shark Bites, lots of you will already know my thoughts on Shark Week. But I'd say that it's been a fair while since I made a video that revolved around Shark Week itself. Actually, come to think of it, I think that's swimming Zuma Pigs video that I made a few months back was definitely related to Shark Week, so that wasn't that long ago, but before that, it had definitely been a while. I'm guessing though there's a few new subscribers out there that haven't maybe seen the videos that I've made about Shark Week or don't really know my thoughts on Shark Week. And like in many aspects of my opinions on things, I always try to be somewhat balanced about it. In truth, there are lots of Shark Week shows these days that are pretty crap, and some of them feature stunts that are just downright stupid. But I've always said that while it's important to criticize them for the bad ones that they do, it's also important to simultaneously praise them for the good ones that they make. And there's definitely a few good Shark Week shows out there. Ones that feature real scientific research or look at obscure shark species around the world or have interesting debates and conversations about sharks. And we've all got to stand up and say, hey, that one was a really good one. Make more of those. I'm just pausing for a second. I don't know if you can hear that. My dog in the background is dreaming. <laughs> oh, Hugo. <laughs> right, God, where were we? I've got so distracted there. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's obviously a trade-off for the Discovery Channel and the production teams here, which is trying to balance the science and conservation element with the entertainment and drama element of television. And that's not an easy thing to do. But without fail, year after year, there are some shows that completely miss and you're sat there going, come on, man. Ones that are filled with pseudoscience from start to finish or fear-mongering nonsense shows or are just downright dangerous shows. Some of the shows that I've featured on the channel before are of course the likes of Megalodon the Monster Shark Lives, not sure we'll ever recover from that one. Or we've got the stupid shark myth ones like Submarine the Shark where they're just chasing around some giant mythical shark that they're definitely not going to find. Then you've got the shark attack slash shark bite ones that just go way overboard with the drama. I think Great White Serial Killer was one of those that just kept coming back again and again somehow. And then you've got the insane stunt ones where they'll put people or those people will put themselves in ridiculously dangerous situations with sharks that could have been completely avoided. Jimmy Partington's transparent plastic box springs to mind. I still can't quite get over that footage. Oh yeah, how could I forget the jackass ones as well where Poopies, yes, Poopies, nearly ended up getting his hand bitten off because he literally tried to jump the shark. And those ones right there are all just off the top of my head. I haven't had to think particularly hard to recall those. So there are probably hundreds more out there that sit within those categories. Let me know in the comments, by the way, if there are any shows that stick in your mind that I haven't mentioned, by the way. Every year then we're just sat here waiting for the inevitable and asking ourselves, which of these shows are going to be the ridiculous ones this year. And that's what crossed my mind back in January when a Shark Week production company popped up in my email inbox. Now, I want to get this straight at the start here. For many scientists within this field of research, featuring on Shark Week can help your career. There's often a whole bunch of doors that get unlocked for you when you feature on a show. For example, it can increase exposure to your research, which means you might have a better chance of getting funding. But it can also simply just help you pay your bills in a line of work which is notoriously not very well paid and job security is actually pretty scarce. Overall though, featuring on a Shark Week show can be quite good for your online image or your brand. That is if you feature on a show that doesn't promote harmful ideas about sharks or is filled with pseudoscience or is just downright dangerous. And as to what show you're gonna feature on, well, it's kind of potluck. Production companies can pitch a show to a shark scientist and with the power of modern editing can create a completely different show to the one that they told you about. There have been loads of shark scientists who've been caught out by this down the years where they thought they were filming one thing and then when they've watched it to their horror, it's something entirely different. They've had their responses to certain questions cut and edited over different questions and have just been downright lied to. Some of the stories out there are utterly bonkers. But despite all of that, for a lot of people, the benefits of featuring on a Shark Week show often outweigh the risks and that's something I can totally understand. So when this production company approached me, I have to be honest, I was really excited but with a tiny little bit of apprehension as well. I'd say I've worked pretty hard over the last few years to try and build something here and hone my science communication skills. So for a production
production company to notice that, it felt like a really big pat on the back. So the email titled Shark Special Casting Opportunity from said production company read as follows. Hi Christian, I work in development at a Lionsgate Alternative Studios production company, Pilgrim Media Group. Take a look at our website. We produce unscripted slash reality content across all genres and have worked with all major networks and streaming services. Some of our notable work includes Wicked Tuna, that's definitely supposed to say Tuna, The Ultimate Fighter and Street Outlaws, just to name a few. We've also produced a number of shark specials over the years and are currently in development on a really exciting shark concept. We're looking to cast a few roles and your name came up as a potential talent for the series. We love your YouTube series. If interested, we'd love to find time to discuss the project with you in more detail. Do you have time to get on a Zoom or call this week or early next? Thanks. I blurred out their name and email address there because, well, GDPR and all that. Now that right there, I'd say is a pretty exciting email to get. So I agreed to jump on the Zoom call a few days later. I, of course, don't have any recording of that Zoom call to show you guys, but I chatted to two members of staff at the Pilgrim Media Group and they pitched me the role that they wanted me to play on the show. It was an MC role or Master of Ceremonies. And although they couldn't tell me some of the specifics of what was going to happen, they said I'd be reacting to various shark species underwater. They wanted it to be a kind of fun and jovial role where I'd maybe be wearing some kind of underwater a tuxedo. That was the bit there where my eyebrows started to raise. But I didn't really think too much of it. So we carried on chatting and I told them about my previous experience with sharks, research and diving. We also talked about shark bites here on YouTube and some of the reaction style videos that I've done before. And they thought that I'd be great for the role that they wanted me to play. Anyway, towards the end of the call, they said they'd love for me to jump on another Zoom call in a few days with the director where I reacted to some shark clips so they could see me playing that role. At the time, I did want to know a little bit more about the show, but they said they couldn't really tell me because it was still a work in progress. But just just before we ended the call, they told me it had a working title of Dancing with Sharks. So the call ended and I just sat there thinking to myself, Dancing with Sharks. Dancing with sharks. I really hope this isn't what I think it is. But I sat on it and waited. I didn't really want to jump the gun and wanted to let them elaborate on what it was all about. And sure enough, a couple of days later, they got back in touch again. Hey Christian, here's a link to some fun dance clips. We'd love if you picked your favorite three to four clips and during the interview, you ran through them as if this was a promo for the show. We'll have you do an intro of yourself and the show and then introduce each video, explain what we're seeing and share some scientific facts about the species. If you have different clips that you prefer, feel free to send them to me, please let me know if you have any questions. Introduce the video, talk about what we're seeing and share some cool scientific facts. Easy peasy. That's what I do here on Shark Bites every week. So I clicked the link and I was met with this series of videos. <laughs> They literally meant dancing with sharks. We've got people in aquariums literally manhandling nurse sharks, people flipping tiger sharks upside down while they're feeding them, people touching sharks, bothering sharks. There's even a bloody Ocean Ramsey or Mermaid Kaylee clip in there as well. That right there is everything I stand against when it comes to the treatment and portrayal of sharks in modern media. I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely gutted. If I said yes to that show and they gave me a role in it, it would completely contradict everything that I believe and everything that I've discussed with you guys over the last few years here on Shark Bites. But I'd never had a television company get in touch with me before to feature on a show all about sharks, which is something I've dreamed about since I was a kid. What could be better than showcasing how cool these animals are to an audience of millions? But I just couldn't do it. I don't think I could comfortably sit here after featuring on that show and talk to you guys about how it's bad that people touch and ride sharks and how it's not good for them. I would just be the biggest hypocrite in the world and I think I'd probably lose a lot of your respect. So I turned them down. I did it really nicely to be fair because the two members of staff at the production team had been nothing but polite and friendly to me throughout the entire process. And if I'd have gone back ranting and raving at them about how this was gonna be bad for sharks, we don't know if they're the ones who had the idea for the show. It could have easily been some people higher up in the the company who were pushing it down on them. So I just nicely went back to them and said, look, I don't really agree with some of these clips that you've sent over to me. They're sort of everything I stand against when it comes to sharks. So I'm going to take a step back from this and say no. And to be fair to them, they were really friendly about it too. They respected my decision and wished me well. Now I'm not emboldened enough to think that me turning around and saying to them, look, this is probably going to be bad for sharks would mean that they would change their mind about making the show. They were always going to carry on and make the show regardless. And sure enough, we can see that they definitely have made it because it's featured in the really early promos for 
Shark Week 2025. It looks like the MC role that they were after has been taken on by former Dancing with the Stars presenter Tom Bergeron. I do find that pretty interesting to be fair. This guy's a former TV show host and comedian, but he's got no shark science experience, to my knowledge anyway. It makes me wonder whether they've approached a few of us shark scientists and all of us have looked at it and gone, nah, I ain't touching that with a barge pole. I don't know, maybe. Maybe Tom Bergeron was their front runner from the start. We're never gonna know for sure. The description of the show though is exactly what I thought it was gonna be after watching a few of those short clips. Its logline says, blending skill, grace, and the daring pursuit of the ultimate underwater thrill, five divers all trained by a world-class underwater choreographer will compete to show off their skills during epic underwater dances. Each diver will attempt to outperform their competitors with moves including the hammerhead hoedown and tiger trot and redefine dancing with danger. <sighs> Come on, guys. It's just so frustrating that the Discovery Channel is still giving the green light for Shark Week specials like this one. There's absolutely nothing to be learned from watching people flip sharks upside down and manhandle them for our entertainment. We need to stop touching sharks. Just let them do their thing and film them doing it. These animals are cool enough and do enough crazy shit on their own without us needing to fling them around for the sake of it. There's a time and a place when sharks perhaps need to be touched. For example, when we're doing morphological measurements or maybe tagging them. But let's touch them because we can is not and never will be a valid reason for touching them. Now, I know that I've basically just spent the last 10 or so minutes ranting and raving about the Discovery Channel and Shark Week like I normally do. And maybe I dodged a bullet by turning down that Shark Week show or maybe not. I don't know, but they weren't the only Shark Week show to get in touch.